Today, just for a couple of minutes, I wanted to reflect on the fact that we are relational as human beings, made in the image of a relational God. And we see that way back in the beginning, in Genesis, as God looks at the human being he has made, the man he's made, and he says it is not good for him to be alone. And of course, initially in the kind of microcosm, that's worked out in marriage between Adam and Eve. But there's a much broader, wider truth going on there. God is ordaining the fact that made in his image, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, eternally relational. We, his creation, his image bearers, are made to be relational. We're made to have friends fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers. We're made to know and support each other well. And we see that all over scripture. We turn to the pages of the New Testament. We see that uh, when Jesus sends out his disciples, his followers, he says, go out in twos, go out together. John Wesley, that giant of the faith, used to put it like this. Scripture knows nothing of solo religion. Scripture knows nothing of solo religion. And of course, that's been one of the great difficulties of the pandemic. That actually we've been asked to physically distance ourselves from each other. To step back from each other. And that hurts because it goes against our very nature. The very way that God has created us. And so as we journey through this Lent time, we encourage you to know that you are relational. Your need, your desire for other people, for a kind of common humanity is good and God-given. And to find ways, safe ways in our current circumstances to keep bending into that, to pick up the phone, to find ways to support other people. And as we walk, hopefully, out of this pandemic, to know that we will be restored, we'll move from glory to glory, as we are relational, as we get to see each other in new ways. <laughs>